good afternoon everyone so uh, we will be starting this class uh, with the view of whatever we have uh, finished in the last class and in the last class what we did is that we uh, we, we covered we looked into examined some of the uh, standard equations uh, in cartesian coordinate with the equation which is valid for cylindrical coordinate the equation which is valid for uh, the spherical polar coordinate and eulers equation we have looked into different you know uh, um, uh, solution of different types of equations under different set of boundary conditions may be a Dirichlet boundary condition may be a Neumann boundary condition or Robin mixed boundary condition. So, we have seen how the depending on the boundary conditions the solution of such problems are changed and the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions become different for different boundary conditions. And uh, uh, except the um, uh, Cartesian coordinate, we have also looked into the Bessel equation and Legendre function, Legendre equation, and we have seen how the eigenvalues and eigenfunction will be appearing in the form of Bessel function or Legendre polynomial. And we have also looked into different properties. These Bessel functions and Legendre polynomial they will obey, and also we have seen into the solution of Euler's equation. Not only that we looked into the we have developed the theorem for uh, to, to get the uh, adjoint operator given an operator L. Now, what we will be doing in this class will be we will be formulating the uh, the the, uh, the, the, the de, we will carry forward the development of the eigenvalue problem and we will be defining a standard eigenvalue problem or a strom Liouville problem. Once we define a standard eigenvalue problem or strom liouville problem, we will be looking into some of the theorems and axioms these eigenvalues and eigenfunctions will obey and will be these properties will be utilizing frequently when we will be solving the equations using partial differential equations using the separation of variable type of solution. Once we complete the relevant theorems and axioms of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, then we will get into the actual solution of partial differential equations. Let us uh, start the formulation of standard eigenvalue problem or sturm liouville problem. For that, we consider the, the uh, we cons consider the parameter or operator L, L u is equal to a 0 x plus a 0 x d square u d x square plus a 1 x d u d x plus a 2 x u. Suppose, we consider a, 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 a function like this, where the operator L is nothing but a 0 x d square d x square plus a 1 x d d x plus a 2 x. Now, on separation after doing separation of variables, we will be getting an equation something like this uh, a 0 x d square u d x square plus a 1 as a function of x d u d x plus a 2 as a function of x u plus lambda a 3 u is equal to 0. Just consider this equation and we will be doing the separation of actual separation of variables later on and for that time being just take this equation as granted. It is basically in the form of L u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u. So, this is a generalized form of the equation in a particular equation a 1 may be 0 or a 2 may be 0. But uh, we are going to find out the different for different values of lambda how this equation will be transformed into a standard eigenvalue problem. Now we assume a Dirichlet boundary condition 
homogeneous. Uh, if you remember in the last class, we have looked into several types of boundary conditions, but all these boundary conditions are homogeneous in nature. So, the generality of the solution does not change, uh, the, the steps remains same and the formulation remains constant if we, cha if we change a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition to homogeneous Robin mixed or homogeneous Neumann boundary condition. Let us consider that we used a Dirichlet homogeneous boundary condition. boundary condition and uh, these are at x is equal to 0, u is equal to 0, at x is equal to 1, u is equal to 0. So, let us proceed with this. Now, the form of the equation is L u plus lambda a 3 u is equal to 0. So, you will be getting L u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u and if you look into the similarity of the uh, eigenvalue problem in discrete domain. So, you just remember recall the eigenvalue problem in discrete domain that was a x is equal to lambda x. So, equation this equation can be rewritten as this form. So, equation 1 is recast as d d x of p of x d u d x plus q of x u plus lambda r as a as a function of x times u is equal to 0. Let us say this is equation number 2. Now, these, these two equations will be identical because we define p q r such that p of x is e to the power integral a 1 x divided by a 0 x d x q of x is nothing but a 2 x divided by a 0 times p and r of x is nothing but a 3 x divided by a 0 x times p. Now, we can substitute p, q and r in this equation and we will be getting back this equation. So, let us try to do that and prove that the form of L u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u and this form that is equation 1 and 2 are identical in nature. So, therefore, uh, we start with this. So, p of x is defined as e to the power integral a 1 x divided by a 0 x d x. If you take logarithm on both side, this becomes ln p is nothing but a 1 x integral a 1 x a 0 x d x. Okay. So, if we, we if we differentiate both sides, you will be getting with respect to x, you will be getting 1 over p d p d x is nothing but a 1 divided by a 0 and you will be getting d p d x is a 1 divided by a 0 times p. Now, if we put these values into the governing equation uh, d d x of p of x d u d x plus q of x u plus lambda r of x 
u is equal to 0. Now, what we are going to do? We open up the open this equation up that means, we differentiate this part. So, this becomes p of x d square u d x square plus d p d x d u d x plus q u plus lambda r u is equal to 0. So, therefore, we write the equation as uh, p of x. Okay. So, this becomes substitute the different values of p and q and r. So, p of x d square u d x square okay, plus d p d x we have already found that found out that d p d x in the earlier one is a 1 over a 0 times p of x times d u d x plus q q we have defined as a 2 by a 0 times p plus lambda r u and r we have defined as a 3 by a 0 times p is equal to 0. Now, if we have seen that in all the terms we have a constant quantity that is p of x. Okay. We divide both side by p of x and multiply both side by a 0. So, what you will be getting is a 0 as a function of x d square u d x square plus a 1 function of x d u d x plus a 2 function of x u plus okay, there is one u there. So, uh, u plus lambda a 3 u is equal to 0. So, if we now compare this equation with the earlier one that uh, we had earlier as l u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u. So, this becomes a 0 d square u d x square write the operator l. So, this becomes a 1 d u d x plus a 2 u plus we take lam lambda a 3 on the other side. So, lambda a 3 u is equal to 0. So, these two equations are identical. So, therefore, uh, this equation can be equivalently written as d d x of p of x d u d x plus q of x u plus lambda r which is which can be in general function of x times u. So, my operator we can write it as d d x of p d d x plus q. So, this becomes my operator and we can look into the adjoint operator to this particular operator. So, the operator becomes now L is equal to d d x of p d d x plus q. Okay. So, we have already seen that earlier we have in the last class we have seen that if L of v is a 0 v double prime that means, d square v d, d x square plus a 1 v prime plus a 2 v then the adjoint operator L star v equal to a 0 v double prime plus 2 a 0 prime minus a 1 times v prime plus a 0 double prime minus a 1 prime plus a 2 times v. That means, if my L is equal to a 0 d square d x square plus a 1 d d x plus a 2, then my L star is a 0 d square d x square plus 2 a 0 prime minus a 1 
d d x plus a 0 double prime minus a 1 prime plus a 2. So, therefore, we can compare this equation with the earlier one the the or the um, operator uh, um, uh, the operator was written as uh, d d x of p d d x plus q. So, therefore, p d square x d square d x square plus d p d x d d x plus q. So, therefore, we can compare this equation with the with, with this equation and if we can compare that a 0 becomes if we compare let us say this right and let us write it is 3 this is 4. So, we can compare 3 and 4 and can get different values. So, therefore, we can we can comp by comparing we can write p is a 0 is nothing but p of x your a 1 is nothing but d p d x and a 2 is nothing but q of x. So, if we look into the L star, the L star is a 0 d square d x square plus 2 a 0 prime minus a 1 d d x plus a 0 double prime minus a 1 prime plus a 2. So, a 0 becomes p. So, this becomes p d square d x square plus 2 a 0 prime that means 2 d p d x minus a 1 a 1 is d p d x d d x plus a 0 double prime is d square p d x square minus a 1 prime is d square p d x square plus a 2 is q. So, this two will be cancelling out. So, you will be getting p d square d x square plus it will be 1 d p d x of d d x plus q. So, this will be d d x multiplied by p d d x plus q. Now, this will be if you if you look into the earlier slide we will be seeing that L is equal to L star in this particular problem. So, we are talking about a self adjoint operator. This particular operator in general is known as this uh, in this particular operator in general is known as the Sturm Liouville operator. So, let us write down the Sturm Liouville equation and we have to if we have to prove that if the Sturm Liouville equation is a self adjoint equation, we have already proved that L is equal to L star, but we have to prove that B is equal to B star as well. The boundary operator should also match. So, let us define now Sturm Liouville operator or Sturm Liouville equation. This Sturm Liouville equation is also known as standard eigenvalue problem. So, Sturm Liouville equation is defined as SL equation, it is defined as A0 d square u dx square plus a 1 d u d x plus a 2 u is equal to minus lambda a 3 u. So, subject to the boundary conditions we will use two general boundary condition that is at x is equal to a alpha 1 d u d x plus alpha 2 u is equal to 0 and at x is equal to b we have 
beta 1 du d x plus beta 2 u is equal to 0. So, we consider two most generalized boundary condition that if alpha 1 and beta 1 are 0, then both of these boundaries are they will be boiling down to Dirichlet boundary condition. If alpha 2 equal to 0 and beta 2 is equal to 0, we will be getting a Neumann boundary condition. If both of them are non-zero, then we will be getting a Robin mixed boundary condition. So, we can look into the operator. The operator in this problem is nothing but a 0 d square d x square plus a 1 d d x plus a 2. Both a 1 a 0 a 1 a 2 they are function of x and this equation can be written in this form already we have seen that that equation a stam Liouville equation can be written in this form d d x of p of x d u d x plus q of x u is equal to minus lambda r of x times u. So, l u is equal to minus lambda r u. So, this is a standard eigenvalue problem in continuous function, continuous domain. We have already seen that L is self adjoint in the just earlier to this, we have already seen that L is equal to L star. So, the operator is self adjoint. Now, in the earlier class, we have we have seen this the the, the 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 if the system becomes self adjoint, then the operator has to be self adjoint as well as the boundary condition has to be self adjoint. That means boundary operator must be is equal to b is equal to b star. So for that, you have to what we have to do? We have to examine the bilinear concomitant j u v. So we have to look into the bilinear concomitant. concomitant term. So, if you look into that, we will be getting, we will be writing j u v is equal to v a 0 u prime minus v a 0 prime of u plus a 1 v u evaluated from on the boundaries a to b and this prime denotes differentiation with respect to x. So, if you just open this up, this becomes v a u v a 0 u prime minus v prime a 0 u minus v a 0 prime u plus a 1 v u from a to b. We have already proved earlier that a 0 prime is d p d x and this is p prime and a 1 is nothing but d p d x is equal to p prime and that is equal to a 0 prime. So, a 1 is equal to p prime a 0 is equal to p and a 0 prime is equal to a 1. So, if we so since a 0 prime is equal to a 1 then last two terms of, of this bilinear concomitant they will vanish. So, they will just out they will be just out they will be cancel each other. So, what is the form of bilinear concomitant? This will be v a 0 u prime minus v prime a 0 u evaluated between a to b. So, I can take a 0 common. So, this becomes v u prime minus v prime u evaluated between a to b ok now we will be we will be simplifying it and check whether to to make this bilinear concomitant to zero what will be the conditions on v we have to impose now let us put let us evaluate bilinear concomitant term so this becomes a0 
v u prime at evaluated at b minus v prime evaluated at b u evaluated at b minus v evaluated at a u prime evaluated at a minus minus plus v prime evaluated at a u evaluated at a. Now, we, 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 can, we can we can recall the boundary conditions on u at x is equal to a we have uh, if we recall the boundary conditions on u it will be alpha 1 u prime plus alpha 2 u is equal to 0 and at x is equal to b we have alpha beta 1 u prime plus beta 2 u is equal to 0. So, therefore, we substitute u prime a and u prime b from this equation. So, v of b and what is u prime b? u prime b is nothing but minus beta 2 by beta 1 u at b okay, minus v prime b and u b minus v of a and what is u prime a? u prime a we substitute as minus alpha 2 by alpha 1 times u at a okay, plus v prime a and u a remain as they are. So, just simplify this equation this becomes minus beta 2 by beta 1 u of b v of b. Then we, we have uh, minus u of b v prime of b then minus minus plus alpha 2 by alpha 1 u of a v of a plus v prime a and u prime a multiplication of the. So, we have a 0 we take a minus a u u of b as common minus and also beta 1 to be divided by beta 1 minus u by b divided by beta 1 we take as common. So, what we will be getting is that b 2 v of b plus beta 1 v prime of b and from this 2 we combine this 2 we will be getting plus u of a is common divided by alpha 1. So, you will be, you will be getting alpha 2 u of a plus alpha 1 alpha 2 v of a plus alpha 1 v prime of a. Okay. Now, we do not have any idea about what is the value of u u evaluated at a and u on the boundary x is equal to b. So, therefore, in order to make this bilinear concomitant to be vanished the term in the second bracket they should be put equal to 0 individually each of them. So, if you do that then what we will be getting is that beta 1 d v d x plus beta 2 v is equal to 0 at x is equal to b and from the other uh, other one alpha 1 d v d x plus alpha 2 v is equal to 0 at x is equal to a. So, therefore, these two boundary conditions on v they emerge out from the by putting the j in bilinear concomitant equal to 0 and if we remember this is b star these are the boundary operator of the adjoint problem and if you remember the boundary conditions b on the original problem that was at x is equal to a alpha 1 du dx plus alpha 2 u is equal to 0 and at x is equal to b alpha 1 dv dx plus alpha 2 
uh, u is equal to 0. So, uh, b beta 1 d, d, d u d x plus beta 2 u equal to 0 at x is equal to b. So, therefore, both b and b star are identical and we had l is equal to l star already proved earlier. So, therefore, the we, we proved that strom liouville problem is problem or standard eigenvalue problem problem has self is self adjoint problem. So, you will be having L is equal to L star and B is equal to B star and therefore, this proves that Sturm Liouville problem or standard eigenvalue problem is a self adjoint problem and standard eigenvalue operator or Sturm Liouville operator is a self adjoint operator. So, it does not matter what kind of boundary conditions it have, we have considered the most general Robin mixed boundary condition from which the Dirichlet and the Neumann conditions are, are, are specially derivable under special conditions. So, in the most general conditions of boundary condition and the governing equation, the sturm liouville problem is a self adjoint problem. So, therefore, if we have a, uh, so, so if we can now identify what are the characteristics of a Sturm Liouville problem. There are two characteristics of Sturm Liouville problem. The first one is that it the form of the equation must be in this form L u is equal to minus lambda r u uh, r may be a function of x in general. So, that is the form of the equation governing equa equations and the boundary conditions are homogeneous. If these two conditions are satisfied, these two characteristics are satisfied, then we can have a sturm liouville problem. Okay. Next, we will be looking into some of the theorems of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. The first theorem goes like this, there is a countable infinity of eigenvalues lambda. That means, lambda must be lying between minus infinity to plus infinity such that as lambda n such that lambda n tends to infinity if n tends to infinity. So, we, ha we, ha we, we, we should this statement is equivalent that there are infinite number of eigenvalues exists in n dimensional space okay and in case of function continuous function this n the n dimension becomes too large it, go, it it becomes very large it tends to infinity so in a in case of continuous functions there are countable but infinite number of eigenvalues present Next, we look into theorem 2. This theorem says that if lambda m and lambda n are two distinct eigenvalues corresponding to
eigenfunctions y m and y n, then the eigenfunctions y m and y n are orthogonal functions with respect to weight function r. So, so that, that this, these are the these are for for uh, these lambda m and lambda n are the eigenvalues corresponding to sturm liouville equation so let us write down the sturm liouville equation this is ly is equal to minus lambda r which is in general function of x and and uh, multiplied by y now subject to the boundary operator b is equal to 0 for x lying between small a and small b. So, let us assume lambda m and lambda n are distinct eigenvalues there and the corresponding eigenfunctions are y m and y n are corresponding eigenfunctions So, this y m and y n must satisfy this equation when y becomes y m then lambda becomes lambda m when y becomes y n lambda becomes lambda n. So, therefore, we should write these two equations as L y m is equal to minus lambda m r y m and L y n is equal to minus lambda n r y n. So, this is equation number 1, this is equation number 2. We take inner product of equation number 1 with respect to n y n and see what we get. We get y n inner product of y n and L y m is equal to minus lambda m r y m inner product between these two. Now, lambda m being a constant, it will be coming out of the equilibrium sign uh, you know inner product sign with the minus. So, this becomes inner product of r y m and y n. So, if, if you if you remember in case of continuous function y m y n d x integration y m y n d x is nothing but the inner product of y m and y n and this is identical to inner product of y n and y m. Okay. So, what we will be getting out of this? So, you will be again take the, so this is number 1, num, equation number 3. Then we take inner product of equation 2 with respect to y m. So, if you do that, you will be getting inner product of y m l y n should be is equal to minus lambda n inner product of r y n comma y m. This is equation number 4. Now, what do we do? We subtract equation number 4 from 3 and see what we get. So, if we subtract equation 4 from equation 3, we will be getting 
inner product of y n l y m minus inner product of y m and l y n and this will be minus lambda m okay, inner product of r y m y n can be written as this integral r y m y n d x minus minus plus lambda n r y m y n d x. So, if we now utilize the relationship that we have already derived in the last class that is u inner product between u and l v must be equal to inner product of l star u comma v plus j u v. So, we write that here. So, what you get is that you get inner product of L star y m and v it, it was basically y y m. So, uh, L star u. So, L star y n comma y m plus j inner product of y m and y n minus inner product of y m comma L y n is equal to we take integral r y m y n d x common and this becomes lambda n minus lambda m. So, we have already proved earlier that for strom Louisville problem L is equal to L star and J u v is equal to 0. So, therefore, j y m y n will be equal to 0. So, this will be equal to 0 in the case of Sturm Liouville problem and what we have now is that in a product of l l star y n and y m minus in a product of y m comma l y n is equal to integral r y m y n d x multiplied by lambda n minus lambda m. Now, since l is equal to l star, we can write as l y inner product of l y n and y m minus inner product of y m l y n is equal to lambda n minus lambda m inner product of y m and y n with respect to weight function r. So, therefore, uh, we have already proved the uh, relationship of inner product that is inner product of a and b should be is equal to inner product of b and a. So, therefore, inner product of l y n and y m should be is equal to inner product of y m and l y n. So, these two will be equal and identical they will be cancelling out. So, what we will be getting is lambda n minus lambda m inner product of y m and y n should be is equal to 0. Now, lambda n and lambda m are two distinct eigenvalues. So, lam therefore, lambda n is not equal to lambda m. So, therefore, to satisfy this equation only option that is left is inner product of y m and y n should be is equal to 0. That means, integral a to b y m into y n r d x should be is equal to 0. So, therefore, this proves that the Eigen functions y n and y m are orthogonal to each other with respect to the weight function r. So, this proves that Eigen functions y m and y n are orthogonal with respect to weight function 
R x, this is known as the weight function. So, this completes the proof that for the sturm liouville problem, the Eigen functions are orthogonal functions with respect to the weight function r. Okay. Next, we go to theorem number 3. And if p of x, q of x, r of x are real valued functions, and alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2 are real constants, these are the coefficients in boundary conditions, these are real and, and these coefficients are 0. Then for self adjoint SL system, the eigenvalues are real. If the functions, the coefficient functions are real, if the coefficients in the boundary conditions are real, then there is no reason that eigenvalues becomes unreal or imaginary they will be also real. So, let us prove this and proof goes like this. Let, let us assume that eigenvalues are complex. Let eigenvalues are complex. So, therefore, lambda is equal to c plus i d. So, it has a real part and it has a complex part. So, lambda is equal to c plus i d. So, we have to we write the eigenvalue problem l y is minus lambda r y. So, we take so this is equation number 1. So, that is the eigenvalue. Uh, so, that is a standard sturm liouville problem. We take the complex conjugate of this equation. We have already stated that R x is real. So, L y, y bar, let us say bar is the complex conjugate of y. So, complex conjugate of y is replaced by the, uh, is denoted by the bar on the top of it. So, L y bar is equal to minus lambda bar r, r remains r because it is a real that is our assumption times y bar. So, this is equation number 2. So, this is the complex conjugate. Now, what we will do? We next we take the inner product of equation one. with respect to y bar and we take inner product of equation 2 with respect to y and subtract one from another. Let us see what we get. If we really do the subtraction, you will be getting inner product of y l y bar y bar l y minus y l y bar okay, may be d x d x here is equal to lambda bar minus lambda integral r y y bar d x. Now, we write 
this equation we substitute it as by y l star y bar d x plus a uh, bilinear concomitant between y and y bar minus y integral y l y dash y bar d x is equal to lambda bar minus lambda integral r y y bar d x. Now, since it is a strom Liouville problem, we have l is equal to l star and j between y and y bar should be is equal to 0. Bilinear concomitant vanish as well as the operator is self adjoint operator. So, okay. so, once we know these facts, then we can simplify the equation as y l y bar d x plus j will be equal to 0 minus y l y bar d x is equal to lambda bar minus lambda integral r y y bar d x. So, these two quantities on the left hand side they are identical to each other and opposite in sign. So, they will subtract. So, lambda bar minus lambda becomes in um, uh, uh, lambda bar minus lambda and uh, will be will be taken out and r y and y bar d x is equal to 0. So, we have already seen that r is a real quantity real function and it is a non-zero function. So, r cannot be equal to 0. So, what is the product of y and y bar? Product of y and y bar, this is a complex number we have said and this is a complex conjugate of that. If we, if, if you, if you, if you just do the product, if you just product two quantities which is complex and its conjugate. So, this becomes a square minus b square. So, this becomes a square i square is minus 1 plus b square. So, multiplication of a complex and its conjugate will be always giving rise to a real part. So, therefore, y multiplied by y bar is nothing but mod of y square of that. So, this is a real part. The, what I mean is that the part in the integral r y y bar d x will be always real and positive. So, this is a real and positive. So, therefore, in order to satisfy this equation only option left is lambda bar is equal to lambda. That means, complex conjugate is equal the complex conjugate equal to real part that means, the complex part does not exist. This simply means c plus i d is equal to c minus i d. So, this simply means that d is equal to 0 that means, lambda is always real. So, if you have a function p q r which are all real functions and coefficients in the eigen in the on the boundary boundary conditions beta 1, beta 2, alpha 1, alpha 2 all real then eigen values of the system or the equation will be always real. You will not be having a complex eigen value that means, for real system the eigen values are real and it will be a self adjoint system. Now, let us take a stock of whatever we have done then let us summarize first is we define the classif we, we define the various classifications of differential equations of p d s their linearity homogeneity homogeneity and we have we have already ch we checked and defined then we define the principle of superposition for linear operator
we define the adjoint operator we define the uh, the characteristic of of self adjoint problem adjoint operator and then we looked into the properties of self adjoint operator so the important important properties are number 1 the eigen values are real and eigen functions are orthogonal to each other eigen functions are orthogonal so with this background we will be in a position to solve the partial differential equation linear partial differential equation by using separation of variable method so in the next class onwards we will be taking up the solutions of partial differential equation and up to this class we are equipped with all the weapons in order to attack to solve the partial differential equations by using using separation of variable thank you very much